Welcome to a brand new episode of the Jam Pack Report today for October the 14th of 2020. Of course, my name is Samuel Adams and this is a daily gaming news podcast meant to bring you the hottest news you need to know from around the industry. Hosted on YouTube and podcast services around the world five days a week, it is your one-stop shop for everything you need to know. So if you enjoy the show and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. But today we finally got some good news about the next Call of Duty Modern Warfare patch, it's finally making the game smaller instead of bigger, at least on PC. Call of Duty Modern Warfare's file size has become a meme. While the base game itself was already pretty hefty when it launched late last year, it has only continued to grow over time, especially with the advent of Warzone in 2020. As it stands, the game now weighs in around 200 gigabytes in total, which is nuts. Fortunately, it sounds like the powers that be over at Infinity Ward and Activision have finally heard our pleas and are looking to do something about it, at least on one platform. In a new update that will roll out today, Infinity Ward's Paul Hale has confirmed that Call of Duty Modern Warfare players on PC will finally be able to shave down the game's overall file size. This update will allow users to essentially uninstall certain portions of Modern Warfare that they might not utilize. For instance, aspects of the title's campaign should be able to be uninstalled entirely to save some precious space on your hard drive. More details should be provided as the patch starts to roll out today. While it is great to see that Infinity Ward is finally making this possible, it's unfortunate that the benefit won't be rolling out to those on PS4 and Xbox One as well. At this point, it is still pretty jarring that Warzone cannot be separated from the larger Modern Warfare download. If Infinity Ward could make the Battle Royale experience separate from Modern Warfare, I imagine that would please quite a vast number of people. With this year's release of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War slated to drop in just about one month, let's keep our fingers crossed that the next gen iteration of the game will be more optimized than what we have seen of Modern Warfare over the past year. Hopefully, this is going to be the norm for next gen. We've talked about how the SSDs that are coming to the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are changing the way that files are stored on systems, uh, and it seems like this is the first step towards making that the new norm, where you can just install a certain portion of a game, uh, especially if it is a game that has a very specific portion of it that remains popular long after the rest of it has kind of been forgotten. Uh, that's not to say that Modern Warfare's campaign is bad, but right Right now, it seems that Warzone and the standard multiplayer are the two standout portions of that game. Uh, and I even think about a game like Doom Eternal, where it does have a multiplayer component, but I'm never going to play that. I just want the single player. So to be able to just install that specific portion of the game is very nice, and really is up to the devs how they want to treat their game. Now, specifically in regards to Call of Duty Modern Warfare on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, Call of Duty Warzone should absolutely be separate from Call of Duty Modern Warfare proper. There is no reason that I need to install the entirety of Modern Warfare to get access to the Warzone map and the Warzone game mode. You should not, and I repeat, you should not loop in 200 gigabytes of files for one free-to-play download and within those files is an entire other game that you have to pay $60 to access. That's just not how it should be. Uh, so, in reality, the way this should have been handled is that Warzone is a standalone launch not tied into the Modern Warfare launcher. Uh, of course, the marketing uh, guy in me thinks that this is probably some kind of way where if you do have somebody that tries out Warzone and they're like, man, this is some tight shooting, I should play the rest of Modern Warfare, well then they can buy it and then it's already installed and they don't have to wait and they can just jump in. I understand that approach, but the modern gamer is smarter than that. They know exactly what you're doing, they know what they're getting, and they know what Modern Warfare is. If they're playing Warzone, they probably already know what Modern Warfare is. So with that being said, uh, PC players will finally be able to update their game and shrink their file size, but maybe you don't want to play Warzone. I have good news. If you have Game Pass, there are more games coming. Xbox Game Pass's next additions include Katana Zero and Age of Empires. Tales of Vesperia, Heave Ho, and the Swords of Ditto are other solid additions to a stacked month. 
If you have been around the video game space in any capacity, you've probably heard Xbox Game Pass referred to as the best deal in gaming. Containing an assortment of Microsoft's biggest first-party games, a slew of third-party gems, and access to EA Play in the very near future, Microsoft's subscription service is a must-have for any Xbox owner. As they do every month, Microsoft has just confirmed the latest additions to the service, with no fewer than eight games joining the party. Headlining the list is an excellent indie title from the, excuse me, and the definitive version of a PC classic. The full list is as follows. On October the 15th, you are getting Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition on PC, Heave Ho on PC, Katana Zero across all three platforms, console, Android, and PC, and Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition on console and PC along with the Swords of Ditto, Mormo's Curse on PC. Then on October the 21st, you were getting Scourge Bringer for Xbox consoles, and then on October the 22nd, you were getting Cricket 19 and Superland on the Xbox console version. Once again, Microsoft has flexed its Game Pass muscles with another great and varied batch of games. Age of Empires is a classic strategy hit, Katana Zero is a critically acclaimed neo-noir action platformer, and Tales of Vesperia is a beloved RPG that originated on the Xbox 360. These games join the recently added Doom Eternal to a stacked month of additions. Not everything can last forever, however, and there are a handful of games leaving the service over the next few weeks. Leaving on October the 15th are Felix the Reaper, Metro 2033 Redux, Minutes, Saint Row 4 Reelected, and State of Mind. On October the 30th, After Party, Lego Star Wars 3, Rise and Shine, The Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game, and The Red Strings Club will be saying their goodbyes. With Microsoft's recent acquisition of the gaming giant Bethesda, Xbox Game Pass will only continue to get stronger. At the time the deal was announced, Xbox head Phil Spencer stated that Microsoft, quote, will be adding Bethesda's iconic franchises to Xbox Game Pass for console and PC. I have a feeling that the Bethesda games will be coming in November or December. That seems to make sense because that's a fantastic way uh, to launch a console that has had a marketing campaign heavily focused on backward compatibility because that has been a large focus of the Xbox campaign going into the Series X. Uh, so if you were wondering where those are, that's probably where you'll find them. Uh, now, in regards to the games that are coming out this month on Game Pass, I think Katana Zero is probably the standout for me. Uh, I always have enjoyed that game, uh, and I'm looking forward to diving back into it on PC as well. On top of that, I think that another one that is worth mentioning is Age of Empires 3, a uh, very big PC game, and then the Swords of Ditto, I've heard good things about. Uh, so if you do want to jump into the rest of the games that are coming out this month, you can check them out if you have a Game Pass subscription, uh, which of course there are a couple of different versions of. There's Xbox Game Pass Ultimate that comes with Xbox Live, it comes with Xbox Game Pass for console, and Xbox Game Pass for PC, along with other perks, and then you have Xbox Game Pass for just PC or just for console if you just want the games. But another big perk is coming to Xbox owners if you were a legacy player. Xbox 360 owners get free cloud save transfers to the Series X and the S. You better dust off that old 360 ahead of November the 10th. When the Xbox Series X and Series S come out on November the 10th, all Xbox 360 owners will have the option of taking advantage of Xbox Live's cloud save functionality to transfer their save files to Microsoft's next-gen consoles for free. With all of the additional computing power that the Xbox Series X and S feature over the Xbox 360, you will be able to enjoy those older games with enhancements like a more consistent frame rate, faster loading times, and HDR. As Microsoft notes, when you turn on one of the new consoles for the first time, your entire digital library of Xbox 360 games will be ready to download, provided they are backward compatible with the system. Any titles you have on a disc can be installed by inserting them into the Series X's Blu-ray drive. Of course, if you have an Xbox Live Gold subscription, you can already upload your 360 file to the cloud. Uh, nonetheless, it is a nice gesture on Microsoft's part towards those who may have skipped the Xbox One in favor of a PlayStation 4 or another system and now plan to return to the Xbox ecosystem. Cool little benefit here, you know, especially again for a console that is really harking on the power of backward compatibility and the benefit that it brings. It is important to be able to fulfill the expectations of players and say, I played Fable 2 on my Xbox 360 
Then they boot up their Xbox Series X. Lo and behold, their cloud save is there. They jump in. They play it. I was playing Perfect Dark on my Xbox One. Jump into your Series X. Boom. There it is. Playing it. Uh, it is important to have these experiences ready to go. And I think that having free cloud save transfers to the Series X and S for 360 owners is a portion of the audience that probably is not the majority. Uh, but for those that might be jumping on board after having a large hiatus from gaming, or as the article said, uh, jumping over to the PlayStation 4 for a generation and they want to come back to the Series X and the S, uh, this could be a fantastic way to, uh, you know, go ahead and ease that transition. But if you want a PlayStation 5, a follow-up story from yesterday's show is going to give you the chance to get one. Burger King is going to give you the opportunity to win a PlayStation 5 or some games or PlayStation Now, depending on how many burgers you can shove in your face. Uh, if you're having trouble procuring your PlayStation 5, there is another way to get your hands on one of the hottest pieces of tech this holiday season, and it involves buying some Burger King. Sony announced a new promotion in conjunction with Burger King to give gamers a shot at getting their own PlayStation 5. Starting on October the 15th through November the 22nd, purchasing the 2 for $5 meal at any Burger King in the US will have the chance at winning a PlayStation 5. Of course, there is a specific way to enter the PlayStation 5 Burger King promotion. First, hungry gamers will need to register on the BK app or BK.com to participate in the BK PS5 promotion. When the guest purchases a two for five dollar deal or makes a five dollar or more purchase on the BK app, BK.com, or in restaurant, the guest will earn one game token. Guests can then use the game token to play the digital scratch off game in the BK app or BK.com for a chance to win a PlayStation 5 console, PlayStation game codes, or BK coupons. Official rules are posted on the Burger King website as well as alternative methods of entry, prize details, odds, disclosures, and much more. To celebrate the new promotion, Burger King put out a brand new video that actually informs gamers on how booting up the PS5 will sound, and of course we talked about that on yesterday's episode of the Jam Pack Report. Uh, so if you do still need that PlayStation 5, you can lock one down by eating tons and tons of okay fast food. Um, this is a, an interesting promotion, of course, notably a little bit more uh, necessary uh, investment then the Taco Bell promotion that's going on for the Xbox Series X. Of course, you can run through Taco Bell, get three medium drinks, and you've got three entries to get an Xbox Series X. Uh, you can go to Burger King, spend 15 bucks, and you have this giant pile of food and three entries for the PlayStation 5. Uh, either way, cool that they are partnering up, and I did read uh, the details in the official rules. If you do want a PlayStation 5, Burger King is giving away 1,000 of them. That's not a lot, but it is a good many. On top of that, uh, they're giving away 2,000 codes for Sackboy, 2,000 codes for Demon Souls, and then 3,000 codes for three months of PlayStation Now, if I remember correctly. Uh, so... With that being said, if you do want to give it your best shot, uh, then you can run to your local Burger King on October the 15th through November the 22nd, and you can start shoveling that OK fast food right down your gullet. But to round out today's show, Microsoft Flight Simulator players are adding a towering Xbox Series X to Redmond, Washington. We don't know exactly when Flight Simulator is coming to the Xbox consoles, so one player took matters into their own hands. They brought an Xbox console to Microsoft Flight Simulator. On PC, of course. On Reddit, Ogaz posted a video of the towering 200 meter tall Xbox Series X they modeled and added to Redmond, Washington, where Microsoft's headquarters is located. And that massive Xbox Series X looks like it's planted right in the middle of campus. The Xbox Series X has been faithfully modeled by Ogaz, right down to the ports on the back and the big glowing green light that shines through the top worth noting, doesn't actually glow, uh, which looks especially pleasing at night. I'm not sure how well the real Xbox Series X will run the notoriously demanding Microsoft Flight Simulator when it comes out on console, but the one in the video looks like it'd be able to handle it no problem. Unfortunately, I don't see anywhere to download and install the massive Xbox Series X for your own game of Microsoft Flight Sim, but if Ogaz makes it available, they will let you know over at PC Gamer. Uh, I do really just enjoy this more than I can even imagine and explain because the fact that this exists and there's this giant 
obelisk shaped xbox in the middle of of redmond washington uh really just does it for me i don't i don't know what else to say that's what i love about pc gaming is that the creativity of the community and the creativity of those that are actually uh playing the games are just second to none now what legends these people are uh, but if you do want to pick up microsoft flight simulator of course it is included in xbox game pass and you can experience stuff like that uh, it is pretty demanding on pc if you want to go for the best looking settings it is coming to xbox one at some point and of course it will be compatible with xbox series x if not specifically designed around it as well but we'll have to wait and see for news from microsoft about when that is actually hitting However, that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what you think about everything we talked about here today. What stories caught your eye? And more importantly, do you want to uninstall specific portions of Call of Duty Modern Warfare? Are you even still playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare? And more importantly, are you liking Black Ops Cold War? What do you think? Leave it in the comment section down below. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic one. I'll talk to you soon and peace.